Hello, everybody. This is a Lamley Matchbox Monday sneak peek preview or sneak peek video. Not a preview of sneak peeks. They're not a sneak peek of a preview. Nonetheless, I'll get over that. I've got Matchbox. I've got upcoming Matchbox. I'm going to get right to it. I have a few models to show. We're going to dig into a couple of them a little bit. Let's just start right now. I've got moving parts and basic, and we are going to start right here. This is a model that we have seen before. This is the next version of it. It is the Toyota FJ Cruiser. Comes now, we've seen it in blue. I think we've seen it in orange, maybe gray. Now we see it in red with the opening doors. I believe this will be in moving parts, obviously, because it has the plastic wheels. Uh, we already saw it in the Japan series, so I do not think this will be a recolor in the Japan series, but uh, this will be new for the moving parts series. Like it in red, like it with the black rims. Pretty simple, but pretty clean. Not too much to say other than there's a new color of it. But this one, this is definitely one to look at this. Is the Jeep Gladiator, correct? Yeah, Jeep Gladiator. But if you notice, you might say, oh yeah, we've seen this one before, but you haven't seen this one. You haven't seen it from Matchbox. You have a Hot Wheels version that's lifted with motorcycles in the back, I think, right? And then you have a Matchbox version that sits at more of a stock height, but the doors are all removed. This is actually another version of the Jeep Gladiator, this time in moving parts. It has doors, no more door. The doors are added back on. It has a roof, but it also has an opening... Uh, hood. I'm going to try and get it so you can, well, I don't know how focused I can be on this, but you can kind of see there that it has the opening hood. There's the engine inside. So they have been doing this. They've been taking some models from basic, moving them to moving parts, adding some moving parts. The next one I show you will be the same thing. So that is a very nice one. Next one. I mentioned that some have been gone from basic to moving parts. This Fiat 500 has done exactly that. So you've seen the Fiat 500 released a couple of times in the basic range. Now you see it moving to moving parts with an opening tailgate. I have to kind of, sometimes they stay open, sometimes they don't. But you can see this one. And I like, you know, I like the opening tails, to be honest, uh, versus the doors. Sometimes the doors create big gaps. I got a couple of those coming up, but, but they look pretty good. But here's the one with the opening hatch. And I think it looks nice. A nice little stock Fiat 500 um, that looks really cool. Um, not much to say. I think I didn't pull out the other Fiat 500 to compare, but it's pretty much exactly the same. You can see uh, the same silhouette. Obviously, the Fiat 500 is a car that we're all familiar with. Detailing front and back plus the uh, opening part. That's pretty nice. Now, I've got a couple of basics before we move on to our uh, mini theme of this uh, of this video, which is... Uh, which is Lexus. We're going to get to those. You can see them there. Um, I've got two basics that I think people will look very, look very much forward to. Both Japanese cars, two different brands. But here is the Mazda RX-8. This is one that was uh, mentioned that is coming. And here is the completed version. It will be coming to basic in just a couple of mixes in kind of a metal flake black. 2004 RX-8. When was the last year of the of the RX-8? Was it was it about then? I don't remember what the last last exact year of it, but this is obviously that that model type. I don't know how much uh, changes have any, if any were released afterwards. But this is the RX-8. Doesn't get as much love, obviously, as the RX-7 and the and the different iterations of the RX-7, the RX-8. Uh, you know, but it, it's going to get there, and it's really cool to see Matchbox release this one in a very very stock look. It's got the five spoke chrome, five spoke rims on it, which look very very nice. Um, and this one has a very, very clean look to it, which uh, I am uh, I am really, really digging. And I imagine with all of the RX-3s and RX-7s that have been out, uh, this RX-8 will be very popular and kind of fit in nicely with a lot of the other models. All right, moving from Mazda to Honda, and I just love this thing. We'll be talking more about this model in a little bit because this is based on a real car. This is the Honda N600. We've seen the N600 before. Hot Wheels has done it in this really nice kind of lowered, slightly updated version of this tiny little car. And, um, and now we have Matchbox taking it on in a rally form. And this is based on a real car. The deco is not. The livery is, uh, is a made up livery, but it's still really cool because it has kind of a retro look to it. Um, but this off-road Honda has a very interesting history. I was actually talking to the person who owns the actual car, and I'll put some links up um, in the uh, in the description of this video so you can see some of the some of the information about it. But it was kind of an experimental car as as Honda tried to get into the rally side of things, and the car didn't go well. It ended up getting stranded, disappeared, and 
people knew it existed but didn't know where it was. And this, uh, this owner who I said I'll send you this link to um, ended up finding it in Washington behind an old Honda Acura service shop and has now now owns it, has it running and uh, speaks, <clears throat> excuse me, speaks to the history of this one. So it's really, really cool. He did work with Abe and the Matchbox team to create this casting. You can see it has a little bit of lift in the back and uh, and it is incredibly, incredibly cool. I love this. You know, sometimes we see Hot Wheels take on a very mo a modern JDM kind of look, you know, modified look to some of these Japanese cars. We'll see Matchbox do stock and then do something different. This off-road N600 has me in love. And I think you guys will dig it too. I think it really works with uh, like the Safari Porsche that we've seen as well. I'll have to put uh, those together in, a, in some pictures and a video and everything else. You guys will uh, dig that one, I am sure. All right, before we get to the theme of the day, we also have this coming out very, very soon. Might even be this week. This is the Divco milk truck um, in the Mattel Creations, right? This is a direct-to-consumer version. But notice something, the box is much smaller and so is the container. So we've seen some fairly large um, Mattel Creations, you know, Matchbox, Matchbox Collectors, I think is what it's called, uh, boxes, but now they've shrunken this one. I don't know if they've done that just for this version of the, Div of the Divco Milk Truck, but let's get right to it. Obviously, you know the theme of this one. You know what the Divco Milk Truck is. I'm just going to uh, show it to you. We've seen Tootsie Roll. Obviously, Mattel has something going with Tootsie Roll because they did an RLC... Was it the Nova Gasser with the Tootsie Roll Deco? Let me just go ahead and show this thing to you. It is super, super cool. Very, very simple packaging. Very, very simple, but absolutely stunning truck. The Divco milk truck is like, like, like the 55 Bel Air Gasser from Hot Wheels. They can kind of do what they want with it. Tootsie Roll makes a ton of sense right? Has the, has, you know, it's a, it's kind of a, would you call it a vintage candy? I kind of would. Um, and it has a very vintage delivery truck, candy shop, kind of candy truck kind of feel to this. Um, you could see it playing music if you wanted to, like going down the street. I just think this thing is super, super cool. This truck, this casting is not my cup of tea per se, but this version is definitely cool. So Matchbox sent me this, sent me, sent this to me so I could show it to you. And then you can, um, uh, Obviously, it'll be available in Mattel Creations, I think, fairly soon. So look for that announcement pretty soon. All right, let's talk Lexus. I have two Lexi to show you. One coming up soon in moving parts. One still in the early stages of development. And I'm very excited to show you both. You can see what you're looking at. Before we go, before we get into these two, let's talk about Lexus for a second. We have seen, we saw last year, the Lexus LS400 released, right? 1994 LS400 classic Lexus car from the mid 90s. Um, I really liked that they did this car. I thought the casting was a little small, but I still like it. It's nicely detailed. Very, very cool car. And it was the first Lexus we had seen in like 15, 16 years from Matchbox. And in fact, the first one we've seen from Mattel. Matchbox is coming back with Lexus. I'm sorry, Mattel is coming back with Lexus with a vengeance. We'll talk more about this model in an upcoming video this week. I've got this, uh, I got a preview for that one. So we'll talk about that one coming up soon but one of the castings speaking of Lexus the LS400 is nice but I'm really happy to see Lexus and Matchbox partnering up because it might mean that we can finally see the return of one of my all-time favorite Matchbox castings and one that I have missed and just think needs to come back and that is the Lexus GS430. I'm going to walk you through all of these very very quickly um, so you can kind of see them. This was released in 2007, about the same time as they were releasing like some other, I mean, 2007 is one of the best years Matchbox ever had. Rio Asada was designing for Matchbox. We saw this Lexus, we saw the Audi R8, we saw the Porsche 911 GT3. Castings that we've seen continue to, to be um, very relevant today, right? From Matchbox. And for some reason, this, I mean, there was the Toyota. There was a time when they didn't have the Toyota license, so that makes sense. But for some reason, this poor casting has just not made its way back. And this is a car that was obviously relevant. It's the 2006 GS430. It was obviously relevant when it came out in 2007, um, but it's relevant today too. It's very much VIP style. A car like this, 
I would just love to see, and this has been on my list, you know, a lot of things like wanted the, I wanted someone to do the Prelude, Honda, or uh, Hot Wheels finally did it. And this is a casting that I would love to see return. In fact, here, I'll get you through. They go through these kind of, they finished off, I don't know what year this was, but they finished off with these kind of funny colors. That I, this orange one is, I mean, it's kind of a weird thing. The car to get of this at GS430, um, I haven't, I have all of them. But the car to have, if you can get on it, is it, get it is the super fast for a lot of reasons. Number one, all of these were clean. They all have the same wheels on them, the 10 spoke wheels. All of them have front and rear detailing, which this casting desperately needs. But this super fast version goes a little bit extra front, rear detailing, but also window trim is done and it has that absolutely gorgeous tan interior on the inside to make this one very much a luxury style. Now, what would I love to see happen to this casting? Well, I know they can't lower it a bit. I, I'm assuming the tool may be damaged. That's one of the reasons we haven't seen it. So they'd have to redo it and keep the proportions exact. Don't make it too narrow, too small. Do it exactly as it is. But all you need to do is take the wheels, these five spoke wheels, do something fun with them, stick them on there on a black or a white version and you have a full on VIP version of a VIP car. Just something that I would love to see. I would love to see this casting come back. And since we're already seeing Lexus, it just makes a ton of sense for us to uh, get those back. Let me clear off some space here. We have two coming in moving parts. This is the first one. This is the Lexus LX. The thing that's very signature about this one, it has, it's going to be in the moving parts line. It has the opening tailgate there on the back. Um, but it also has that Battlestar Galactica Cylon grill, which is so um, synonymous with Lexus these days, which I really think is kind of cool. So this one looks really, really good. I like it in the pearl white. Love the detailing on this one. Love it's got that uh, same colored interior, which looks really nice. Kind of gives that luxury feel to this one which makes a lot of sense. It's one of those kind of perfect matchbox, realistic cars that makes, uh, just fits so well in the line, but it pales in comparison with another one of my long time die cast wants. And that's for one of the Mattel brands to take on the Lexus LFA. I had to ask Mattel to send this to me so I could show it to you. This is obviously the unpainted early tool uh, first shot of the Lexus LFA. In fact, it's still got a blank base. So they're still working on the development of this one. Obviously, we're gonna, we'd, I, I don't know what color it's coming in. This even are the wheels they're gonna use. I think we're gonna see this one in the collector series and it's gonna have two piece wheels. And from what I've heard, there's a good chance you'll see new two piece five spokes on this one. I, they can't guarantee it, but that's what they're working towards. So I don't know what, that's what they're shooting for. I don't know if they don't do it, what wheels we'll see on this one. But the casting looks phenomenal. It looks well proportioned. It looks, well, I mean, I'm just gonna let you kind of look at it on the turntable and see all of the details here. And then I'll open the door so you can kind of see the interior as well. Obviously a lot of development to happen on this one, but I just thought just, it's so exciting. I know there's a lot of collectors that are equally excited that finally we're seeing an LFA. It's so, it's like, years and years too late, right? But at least we're getting it now. And considering how much Matchbox has been nailing castings of late, I'm glad they're doing it now because I think it's gonna look really, really good when it's finished. Has the opening doors, of course. I think the doors look nice. The interior is hard to see because it's just plain white. So there's still more details to look into, but I cannot wait. Anyway, there you go. That is your sneak peek video. Tell me which one you're most excited about. I cannot wait to see how this LFA turns out. You might want to jump into the Lexus game, go back and find, I think that these, these older Matchbox Lexus, the GS430 are fairly affordable. The Superfast might not be, but fairly affordable these days. And then of course the Tootsie Roll truck uh, coming soon. You guys tell me what you think. Thanks everybody. Bye.